Good evening to you. To you too. This is where it gets difficult, as it all begins. Yes. So I'm going to play a little tune as a background sound for us. The this evening. Thing. Go on. <laughs> this is Moths This. This is the first time we've ever done a show like this. And we're going to have some entertainment for you this evening. We have Mothbox, Moth Chat in their, in their corner. Hello, guys. Oh, hello there. Hello, brother. Basically, there's a big list of things that we should be making you aware of, some of which we will probably forget. Uh, but firstly, maybe can we draw attention to the fact that this is a huge creative and technical endeavor. And if it's possible to kind of have a little look at the technical crew, uh, because it's not just technical, it's also highly creative as well. So everything that's happening right now is, is predominantly because of the abilities of these genius, yes. creative, technical people here. And socially distanced, of course. Oh, yes. So we have Thing Peace, who is uh, in-house just doing the workshops. Hi. Can uh, you guys see him? <laughs> Hello. Can yeah. I just say that I'm holding my microphone in a 1970s style as well here? Does anyone know? Of course you can. That? So, I mean, I guess, we just have to keep referring to our lists and uh, we're approximately going to be going to a video. We are. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a mixture of live, uh, live performances and recordings. Uh, and so the first, are we going straight to a video now? We could do, but we could wait. Oh yeah, we could wait. How, well, how about we have a bit of a chat with Mothbox then? Are we able to chat? We just say stuff, what we see, and we yeah. like or don't. It's like goggle boss, but with moths. Yeah. Moth okay. chat. Moth Patent chat. pending. We'll be chatting in the, uh, in the little chat section, if you want to say hello to us. On, online. online. Typing stuff and that. Yeah. Like. yeah. Me, and, me, and the, me and my moth friend here. We've got our pupae's with us. <laughs> pupae. <laughs> oh. Stage three of the cycle, may I add. Oh all? yeah, so also this yes. evening, Mothstis will be occurring as four, as four stages in the moth cycle. So we have the stage that we're currently in, which is the egg. Then we'll have lava. Isn't that right, Alex? Sorry. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I just inhaled some of my costume, it's okay. Um, that, that basically, yeah, there are four stages in the moth life cycle. Uh, that's a scientific thing that we've added to this uh, it's a fact. night. Yeah, it's a fact. <laughs> you won't be getting many facts tonight. Overall, the Vice Moth experience tends to be towards the kind of Dadaist and surreal. We usually improvise our music, and I think that kind of has carried over to some extent in this production tonight. Uh, whilst everybody here probably knows what they're doing, uh, maybe we don't that much. <laughs> so you're just going to have to go along with that. I'm, I'm go I think Should it's... we mention the charity thing as well? Yes. So we have decided um, that, well, we haven't decided. We, we thought that it would be nice for anybody that's watching, because everybody involved in this is doing it for free. Obviously, thanks to everybody once again. Um, but we thought if anybody wants to kind of 
donate something towards something, then we have a charity which is the Migrant Artists Mutual Aid, Aid Charity, which is a Liverpool-based charity that helps um, migrant artists uh, in need, essentially. And so th there is a link, in fact, on the chat, I think. Yes. And in various places on our online presence at the moment. So and chat moth. Please we, uh, feel free. We don't actually have the, the link here, but we will find it we'll and we will put it in. I'll text it to you. We'll Lovely. sort that. We've got a live audience also, socially distant. Make some noise, guys. Woo! And Think Peace is just cracking on, as, <laughs> as suggested. Yes. So maybe we should go to our first video. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think, and I think it'll get better. We'll get, it's gonna get, only going to get better from here. Yeah. Venya, how are you doing? Let's do this. Before we go further into the garden, we must make sure to remain safe and healthy. Here is my advice to you. In the garden, one should always honour the great and mighty sun by anointing one's skin with protection. It is possible to grind your own lotions for this purpose. In order to see within, one should shield one's eyes without. If dark optical wear is not to hand, the ancients used foliage for this purpose. Take the utmost reverent caution when handling ritualistic garden instruments. Great knowledge is drawn from deep wells of water. Stay hydrated in the garden. Follow these simple steps and you should make it through the garden unscathed. Join me, Lennox Mead, next week as we cultivate contemplation. Stay safe in the garden. <laughs> well, I, so I've realised that, um, you know, live TV and what it is, uh, I, I, I wasn't prepared to be inhaling my <laughs> wool, but I've been doing that a lot already. Who'd have thought, it, who'd have thought these little things would be such a problem? I know. Uh, so, Mothbox. No. Oh. Yeah, well, that was quite you? gothic, wasn't it? It was great. I liked it. What do you get if you cross a goat and a moth? What do you get? You get a goth. You do get a goth. <laughs> hey. I was going to say a goth. <laughs> <laughs> She's so posh. We were, we, were, we were wondering around about the, the guitar music and that. You know, as, as you know, Laura and her beautiful beau, John Herring, I thought maybe he... Lennox the, Mead, actually. Oh, sorry, Lennox Mead and her beautiful beau, whose name we don't know. Do you think he did the music for that? Potentially. I think he definitely did. Oh, my God. Anyway. Anyway, just, listen up. We've got another one, haven't we, Alex? Moth, clown face moth. Yes. And it's reality goggles. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Morphom, Dokuga Pokemon, Takasa, 1.5 meter, Omosa, 12.5 kilogram, Hanemi, Limpun that's it, Kirahira to Habatak Tabini, Modok no Kona of Paramak.
cool. That was bloody beautiful, wasn't it? It, it was beautiful. What a beautiful pair of reality goggles they were. <laughs> I, f- I wish they were my goggles. <laughs> well, your goggles are beautiful also. Okay, so yes, latest <laughs> discoveries. This is a very hot costume. Is your costume hot? I don't know. <laughs> oh, I mean, they're not costumes. They're our real skin. <laughs> they're just who we are. So we're going to go straight <laughs> over now to a live performance uh, from Nice, Nothing in Common, except Silvio, uh, Silvia Battista and Angela Madonna. Nice. Please take it away. Beautiful. from the encounter between an exoplanet and an exopianet. Quello che state ascoltando è il suono creato dall'incontro tra un exopianeta e un exopianet. Exoplanet or extrasolar planet is a planet outside the solar system. Orbiting around the star, there is actually not the sun. Un pianeta extrasolare o exopianeta è un pianeta non appartenente al sistema solare orbitante attorno a una stella diversa dal Sole.
An exoplanet is less than twice the size of the Earth. Un exopianeta è grande meno del doppio della Terra. This makes it the closest to the Earth sun system known so far. Questo lo rende il più vicino sistema solare a quello della Terra, conosciuto fino ad ora. This potential world look like. Allora, come lo immaginiamo questo mondo potenziale? Thank you. I am changed. I think this is a, a metamorphosis 
uh, in a classic moth style, to be honest. I would agree. There's, Thank you, Nice. There is before Nice and then there is after Nice. There is. What do you think, Moth Chat? We were just really distracted by this candle. <laughs> oh, you were looking into the light. Yeah. I thought it was lovely, of course. The so the, the, the combination of the candle and the music. It's beautiful. Mesmerizing. Mesmerized. You were mesmerized. Thank you, Nice. Thank you, Nice. So up next, we've got the Art Slice, which is amazing because we've had so many submissions into the, into the Art Slice. So um, whenever Enya's ready, we can play, play the Art Slice. I love how...
It's not for us. Vibes. It's not for us to comment on it's what happened there. Mothbox. This is the one thing that you can slag off if you like. <laughs> <laughs> what the bloody hell were they thinking? I mean, slag seriously. away. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> tell what a palaver. Tell us about the, your reactions to the crinkling section. We crinkled along. Oh. I mean, we love a crinkle. Ah, the plastic plants. Did it with this. <laughs> Sounded a little rough. Yeah. Oh. Medieval nice reference. Medieval song. reference there. For you. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay, so would it be time to move on? I think it might even be time for the cookery section. Ooh. Wouldn't you say so, Venya? Buongiorno and all that. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. To the cookery section. Ciao a tutti, oggi sono Falena Elena o Mofa Elena, che dir si voglia, e prepareremo insieme un Mofa Misu, eh, che è praticamente è un tiramisu, ma siccome oggi sono una falena e mh, siccome vivo eh, in un parco e mh, da falena amo eh, l'estate, eh, eh, faremo un tiramisu con le fragole. E, mh, il tiramisu con le fragole come si inizia? Si inizia fa facendo si, i savoiardi. Ehm, e prendiamo delle uova, tipo sei uova, separiamo i tuorli dagli albumi, montiamo gli albumi. Eh, operazione noiosissima, di solito faccio degli squat, ma essendo una falena oggi non lo posso fare, per cui batto le mie ali gialle di qua e di là. Poi prendo gli albumi, passo gli albumi, no, sorry, ehm, i tuorli. Accendo anche il forno, nel frattempo quella è sempre una buona idea. Ehm, C'è anche sì, dell'estratto di vaniglia e del um, oh, lemon zest, I can't remember the, the English, scorza. Vabbè, della scorza di limone, mi viene suggerita. Ehm, quindi, e poi si aggiunge della farina, le dosi sono quelle indicate, e, um, si prepara un impasto che è molto 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 leggero, uh, come si uh, addice ad una falena infatti, e, um, e questo è l'impasto dei savoiardi che, viene, uh, che divido in due teglie, Uh, idealmente taglia della stessa dimensione, in questo caso uh, no, e si vedrà uh, successivamente il risultato di questa scelta um, da falena improvvisata. E, um, quindi uh, l'impasto dei togliardi va in forno e um, viene cotto a 180 gradi. E, um, e questa sarà la base del, del tiramisù. Si passa poi a fare ovviamente un selfie, un falena selfie, nel frattempo, perché è così, non, non si può evitare. E, e poi si passa alle fragole, 
eh, che vengono mescolate con dello zucchero e frullate. Eh, un po' di acqua anche, non eh, guasta. Um, questo sarà il, il, il succo che viene usato poi per bagnare la, la base di savoiardi. Qui abbiamo uova, tante, perché farò una base di mascarpone tanta. Um, e, um, qui sto semplicemente separando la, il savoiardi e iniziando a bagnare con il succo di fragole. E, battito d'ali di qua, battito d'ali di là, Elliot che è il mio aiutante e anche lui ama le falene e questa è l'altra base di Savoiardi e ora sto iniziando a fare la uh, crema di mascarpone con ovviamente di nuovo si, sub, si separa il tuorlo dall'albume si montano di nuovo gli albumi a neve battito d'ali di qua, battito d'ali di là um, e poi si passa al tuorli con lo zucchero e il mascarpone e si mescola di nuovo tutto vehementemente e, e mofamamente e, e poi si aggiungono gli albumi e di nuovo partiamo le ali gialle, ehm, momento delusional a quanto pare e la crema è fatta. La crema di mascarpone è la cosa più buona nel mondo non solo delle falene, nel mondo di chiunque. Ehm, e, eh, ecco poi si va con il secondo strato e si ripete come da sopra. E, di nuovo crema al mascarpone, divina bontà, ehm, eh, il video è stato girato il giorno del mio compleanno, questa è anche la mia torta di compleanno, ehm, crema spalmabile a pistacchio non necessaria ma ehm, eh, dà molto l'idea di un prato eh, che piace a noi falene ehm, e poi sto creando delle decorazioni eh, con fragole e mirtilli per fare delle piccole falene amiche e insieme andremo a scorazzare sul, su un prato di mascarpone, wow ecco qua prima falena seconda e terza falena tante falene ehm Ok, ancora un'altra falena. <ride> e questa è la mia faccia da falena per oggi. Ecco qua. Un mondo di falene per tutti. <ride> Ciao. <ride> Ciao. Ah. Oh. Lovely. I, I think I learned a lot from that. Me too. I ate some of that actually and it was really <laughs> bloody good, I must say. <laughs> it was tasty. It was very tasty. So I think it's a good idea to go over to the Mothbox zone and find out what's been happening in the chattersphere. Uh, yeah. We've got um we've got Matt Boom who thinks he's uh maybe watching an artsy snuff film. Whoa. We've got um Ms. Bumble Skippy who thinks this might be a cult. Really? Which I think we do worship the lamp and the woolly jumper, so she might be right. I love the lamp. Mm. Is there any of that cake left? Oh, sorry, Howard. No, there's nothing left. <laughs> we wish. It was consumed with voraciousness, in <laughs> fact. It would be good if there was some kind of virtual caking, though. <laughs> virtual caking? You know. <laughs> Is that a sex thing? <laughs> could be. Um, so, uh, yeah, anybody out there that actually is joining in with the moth making, by the way, now might be a good time to sort of put some chat up about what you're making. Perhaps we didn't even really suggest to you, for you to do that, which I think you could be doing that because it's, it's a lengthy show. Yeah, we made an error in that moment. <laughs> it's a little bit like children in need, except there aren't children and they're currently in this situation. <laughs> Eek. So, think peace. Tell think us.
Well, obviously you can't. I can, I can bring over some mic at micage to the thing. I am um, actually have a microphone. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, sorry for that. Yeah, we're all good. Hi, yes, so I've been making a cute little pink moth here. What's Aww. it called, Emily, the pink moth? I thought, oh, I gave it a name, Rhonda, what's its name? Schnazzles? Schnazzles? Schnazzle moth. That's its Latin name, eh? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and I've made the wings, so I'm just about to stick the wings onto the moth here. They're very reflective, it's lovely to see that. Yeah, so I'm just going to do that right now with my glue gun here. The just hot glue gun. Hot glue gun, yeah. Be careful of using careful. one of those at home, obviously. Definitely. Yeah. The friend so, of the crafter. Yeah, so <laughs> there we go. There it, there. it looks painful for the moth, but it's not. <laughs> it is actually a little bit painful there for the moth. There was a bit of smoke coming off it, it wasn't there? It's was very hot, the glue, but there we go. Don't smoke. So now I just need some... So oh, watch uh, out. Yeah, I need some legs for this guy. And then he can sit on the moth tree. Yeah, we've got this moth tree here. That's going to be a big feature later in the show as it builds and builds upon moths upon moths. <laughs> but Larry, talk us through what you're thinking right now about the leg options. Um, well, I've got um, a selection of different wires here. So I think I'll probably uh, fashion an inner frame out of this wire. And then I'll... Um, inner frame? Yeah, then I'll cover it with a bit more of this pink fur here. Fur? <laughs> yes. And no more, no less. That's it. That's my plan. Great. That's lovely. So, does that mean it's... I think it might be time for Mothman. Mothman. Mothman is a frequent collaborator of ours, and he's, he's beloved of us all in the, in the Vice Moth world. So, we're going to improvise live music over the top of Mothman's thing. Cool. Let's do it. Nice.
Bravo, Tony. Tony Knox, the Mothman. He predates Vice Moth by several years, and he's been into the moth thing for an awful long time, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> You're aware correctly, and he's a wrestler, so there you go. Let's go to Mothbox quickly, because they've got something to say, I think. Critiquers. I can't say enough nice things about Tony. I love Tony, me. Yeah. He's right nice. We share the studio. He's a proper moth person. Fair dues. Good what, stuff. What kind of influence have you had on him? Oh, it's difficult to say, isn't it? You know, he I'll had a lot of influence on me. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. bet it goes both ways, though, Howard. You're a very influential so. dude. Oh, Alex. He's a kind Something dude. Else, right, let's go to Softworks. Softworks. Six mins. Go.
Oh, soft, soft work, soft moss. What's the softest moss you ever touched? I don't know, tell me. Oh, I, I was asking you questions. Oh, God, I thought it was honest. a joke. It wasn't, though. I thought you had it ready. Oh. Oh, no. That was beautiful. I went to the pet shop the other day and I said, uh, can I have a moth, please? He said, don't be silly, we don't sell moth. I said, you had a lovely one in wind the other day when it was passing by. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Incredible. Th thanks for filling time there, guys. Well, I mean, not that you're filling, because it's, it's about you just as much as it's about anyone. Have thanks you? for your support, Alex. <laughs> We're all just filling time at the end of the day. Basically, what, we went to the toilet and forgot to put our mask back on in time is what happened, essentially. Uh, well, I didn't do that, but maybe that's what you did. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> The cracks are beginning to show now, slowly. <laughs> yeah, the, the mask is slipping. <laughs> it is, literally, actually. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to go to... Well, we're going to another video, aren't we? Let's, yes, let's of course, let's do it. So this one is uh, by Tony Jacob. And it's called... It's a little animation. It's called Codependent, I think, isn't it? It's called Codependent, that's right. F for an artist called Emilio Pinky, I think. That's it. And it is premiering on this show, we've been told. Holy mother of God, that was wonderful. We really like that one. Yeah. 
This is the well second done, time. Emilio. Yeah. Fantastic animation. The beer is flowing, and as a result of that, we're getting looser and looser. You said fast and loose. Fast yeah, and loose. You don't want it slow and tight. We exactly. don't want it slow and tight. <laughs> we don't want it to carry on 1970s. Fast and loose.
Bloody hell, guys, this is... What the... What the... What the frig? Are we on? Are we That's on? the end. What happened there? What? Look at... Somebody <laughs> sort this out. Oh, was that Brit was that Britney Spears toxic happening in the background? I think it was, and you know what? Uh, there is a toxic moth. It's Tell us about it. It's the British death moth can poison you with cyanide. Yeah, there was. How was about that? Yeah, it's true. Quite Fact. Toxic about it, wasn't there? Look, whatever happened there was. Or are we going to people? That's what we really want to know. We've gone to it. Oh, we've gone to it. Right, okay. So, so, so pupa being the third stage of a moth life cycle in which it becomes cocoonated. I like that. And I wish that happened to us. What would happen? Maybe that does happen in our own lives. It's happening to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cocoon.
mm. you know, to go forth, really. Well, that was a lovely video from Sam Wheel and Jay Binary, you know, the, the quite technological one. And then there was Joe Wills there. Jazzing, Jazzing it up. Off. Yeah. Saxamothone. Saxamothone. Nice. Oh, that was good. Thank you, Moth Chat. How are you guys doing? Just kicking back, you know. Just really having a nice time. Mm. Any, uh, having any a bit of time off. <laughs> uh, you're looking very loose. Not loose, but loose. We are loose. Yeah. What's happening in the, the world of chat? Uh, Anything that's spicy? Hey, what's biggest moth? Oh, My moth. I Oh, Mama. 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 I was going to be like the Atlas moth. <laughs> very big. We it's very know nice about, at We actually know about moths. I love a party with a happy at moth there. <laughs> can we just quickly remind people about the charity angle as well before we move on? <laughs> of course we can and go forth. Migrant Artists Mutual Aid, which is about, you know, supporting artists that have come to Britain from different countries and that are, as artists... And we all know about this, experiencing hardship. So please feel, com you know, compelled to donate to that. That would be appreciated. appreciated. Much, muchness. Right, so we're going to go to um, Thing Peace and see how he's getting on with the old moth making. How are you getting on, dude? Um, yeah, good, very well. I finished the pink moth there. And nice. then mm -hmm. I started yeah. making... A bit more of a rock moth here. It's got a oh, like silver that. and black kind of vibe going on. So. Just come over here. Sorry, guys. Rock as a material or rock as a genre of music? Uh, yeah, rock as a genre of music. Nice. What was that, mate? What, what did you say there? Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm a pink moth. Say that again, sorry. Hello. I'm you like the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's got Noel Edmonds. He might be a little bit shy for now. He's only just, you know, <laughs> woken up. He's just come out of his chrysalis. Anyone, Pupa phase. Anyway, this one, I've got the body here. Nice, fluffy black body. And I'm just, uh, I've just tried out, I just tried making some eyes here. So I was just going to try them on for size and <laughs> have a look if they sort of go. Don't force it, Laurie. Yeah, well, I mean, you might have to wait a minute for that because this is not one I've made earlier. This is. Get the hot glue. Maybe we'll come back to you. Should we come back when you've... Oh, no, I can, oh, I can stick them on right now if you <laughs> want. Give him yeah. a chance, Emily. Come on. I mean, rose maple. Um, <laughs> let's stick them on right now. Go on. Here let's go with my eyes. Oh, there we my go. My eyes, my oh. eyes. <laughs> there we are. There's one. It's beautiful. There we go. My eyes. It's going to hurt, hurt him for a sec, but... It gets hot, that stuff, that's for sure. And now I can see. There we go. He's... Oh. So, yeah. So he's, nice. He's coming together, he or she. I think he's quite androgynous, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yeah. go out on a limb here and say that in terms of the ratio of wings to body size, it may not fly as you wish. Uh, yeah. But the bumblebee works, doesn't it? It, it's, it does. <laughs> I mean, it could open its wings out more than that. I'm sorry. You could say they might be overflying. <laughs> I've been too <laughs> negative. Never been negative. So, yeah, we've got that one. Um, I was hoping you could maybe get me a gin and tonic from the snack bar. Should we two off? On. OK, well, we're going to just walk through the crowd. Come on. Obviously, social distance is key here. Come on. Um, hi, guys. How, how are you getting on? Are you enjoying the show? Yeah. Absolutely. It's monumental. Yay! Oh. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, should we get... Uh, Rhonda, would you like to supply... Uh, Thing Healthy piece with a gin and tonic, if you might, wouldn't mind. A, a gin and tonic, please. Oh, Rhonda we'll is not one of them as a well. bar person, but she's willing to do this because she loves us. So this is the this is our um, these are the feasts that we feast upon. The snack zone. I went and bought this stuff earlier on out of our moth budget. Nice. And that's kind of really it. Is I it? mean, people just have this stuff; they eat it, and that. And we made some ice. choices, didn't we, about what snacks to buy? Yeah. Some of them may not be to everybody's choosing. Feel free to comment about the snack choices. In yeah, fact. actually, have people enjoyed them? Yeah, we're getting a lot Pushing. of nods. We're getting a lot of nods, but we're, we're not getting much talking. People are shy here. Moth we're people are shy. We're clutching at straws for content here. We have a lot of moth people. 
Right then, well, let's get back to bloody business. That's all I can say. So we have a lovely soothing video now, don't we, Venya? By Luciana, and it's called Blossoms. And Martin Smith. And Martin Smith.
From the, the studio, studio Simon, Simon Jones, Jones chill out moth, moth experience.
Catch me up, get your jungle on the floor tonight. Make my day. <sighs> slices from the from all over the globe really i've learned about things that i didn't know about before hopefully we all have tonight that's the main thing really so simo just don't moth experience there thank you so it. much killed it in the studio mm -hmm. we were all dancing moth style so hope, what hope you know that what's going on in the chat box there What's people going the, on in the chat box, what? animal? <sighs> well, we've sorted out how to donate now. Go to uh, the link we popped in there, which is nice. There were people really enjoy, enjoying the lamp tempo hardcore. Oh, great. Moths love lamps. Moths love lamps. They do. It's just obvious, isn't it? It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um, w uh, so we're building up towards um, this uh, Zoom dance party, by the way. So this is possibly a, an international first uh, live, real-time, green screen, Zoom dance party involving moths and DJing. There's the potential there for this to happen. What we need to make clear is that people have got moths to dance with. Isn't that right, Thing Peace? Um, yeah, sure. So, if you've, uh, <laughs> if you've been making a moth at home, just as you might do on a Sunday evening, um, we're going to get all the moths together soon and dance them round a, round a fire. To so it, these, to yeah. These two are these two are raring these two are raring to go. They're just getting psyched up. Rock moth. Just getting to know each other. Yeah. Um, Rock moth and schnozzle moth. And then yeah, you can join in with your moth at home for a big uh, big moth dance off. Yeah. Look at them. They look so cute on screen. They looked really. They look good on screen, basically. Yeah, this one's just awaiting its little uh, antennas there, because obviously otherwise it won't be able to sense the vibes down at the fire. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually would be a tragedy. That would be a tragedy. For a moth, anyway, yes. mainly. 
Cool. So we've still got plenty of content as well. We have literally several videos left to show. Several. Thank yeah, we got, we got a bit, you know, overwhelmed with actual content, which is actually a good thing. But then occasionally we were like, we, we didn't really know what this was going to be until tonight. Now we know. <laughs> so now we know. It's and good that can... you know, because I don't know. <laughs> I, actually, <laughs> I actually don't know. So do you know Venya? He's getting there. Main yeah. moth there on the old techno parlor. <laughs> it's a process. And that's what the underlying essence of moth life, basically, isn't it? Mm -mm. It's a process exactly. involving four stages. We do go on, don't we? Should we pass over to Mothbox? Any reflection on that, guys? Reflection. Moths reflection, love reflections, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Uh, I heard that the selection process, you just let a load of moths free, and they flew to the, flew to the videos that they, they chose, and that's how you pick the ones to go on. That's the rumour I heard. It was moss to a flame, let's face it. Uh, there was a couple of <laughs> caterpillars walking along and looked up and saw a moth in the sky and one goes, you never get me up there in one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Good. People are reeling. They're just reeling. So, basically, yeah, we're building up to a dance-off. We're building up to a fire. The, the moths are in progress and looking spectacular. So Thank you, Thing Piece. For that. We, we need to segue to another segment of video. Yeah, and I've got my plans here on my computer, which I'll just look at very briefly. It's all part of the show. We're going to go to the rubber glove with El Motho. Take P it away. Political. The Sphinx, a story by Edgar Allan Poe. During the dread reign of the cholera in New York, I had accepted the invitation of a relative to spend a fortnight with him in the retirement of his cottage or nay on the banks of the Hudson. We had there around us all of the ordinary means of summer amusement, and what with rambling in the woods, sketching, boating, fishing, bathing, music and books, we should have passed the time pleasantly enough, but for the fearful intelligence which reached us every morning from the populous city. Not a day elapsed which did not bring us news of the decease of some acquaintance. Then, as the fatality increased, we learned to expect daily the loss of some friend. At length we trembled at the approach of every messenger. The very air from the south seemed to us redolent with death. That palsying thought, indeed, took entire possession of my soul. I could neither speak, think, nor dream of anything else. My host was of a less excitable temperament, and, although greatly depressed in spirits, exerted himself to sustain my own. 
His richly philosophical intellect was not at any time affected by unrealities. To the substance of terror he was sufficiently alive, but of its shadows he had no apprehension. His endeavours to arouse me from the condition of abnormal gloom into which I had fallen were frustrated, in great measure, by certain volumes which I had found in his library. These were of a character to force into germination whatever seeds of hereditary superstition lay latent in my bosom. I had been reading these books without his knowledge, and thus he was often at a loss to account for the forcible impressions which had been made upon my fancy. A favourite topic with me was the popular belief in omens, a belief which, at this one epoch of my life, I was almost seriously disposed to defend. On this subject we had long and animated discussions, he maintaining the utter groundlessness of faith in such matters, I contending that a popular sentiment arising with absolute spontaneity, that is to say, without apparent traces of suggestion, had in itself the unmistakable elements of truth, and was entitled to as much respect as that intuition which is the idiosyncrasy of the individual man of genius. The fact is that soon after my arrival at the cottage there had occurred to myself an incident so entirely inexplicable and which had in it so much of the portentous character that I might well have been excused for regarding it as an omen. It appalled and at the same time so confounded and bewildered me that many days elapsed before I could make up my mind to communicate the circumstances to my friend. Near the close of an exceedingly warm day, I was sitting, book in hand, at an open window, commanding, through a long vista of the river banks, a view of a distant hill, the face of which nearest my position had been denuded by what is termed a landslide of the principal portion of its trees. My thoughts had been long wandering from the volume before me to the gloom and desolation of the neighbouring city. Uplifting my eyes from the page, they fell upon the naked face of the bill and upon an object, upon some living monster of hideous conformation, which very rapidly made its way from the summit to the bottom, disappearing finally in the dense forest below. As this creature first came in sight, I doubted my own sanity or at least the evidence of my own eyes, and many minutes before I succeeded in convincing myself that I was neither mad nor in a dream. Yet when I described the monster, which I distinctly saw and calmly surveyed through the whole period of its progress, my readers, I fear, will feel more difficulty in being convinced of these points than I even did myself. Estimating the size of the creature by comparison with the diameter of the large trees near which it passed, the few giants of the forest which had escaped the fury of the landslide, I concluded it to be far larger than any ship of the line in existence. I say ship of the line because the shape of the monster suggested the idea. The hull of one of our 74 might convey a very tolerable conception of the general outline. The mouth of the animal was situated at the extremity of a proboscis some 60 or 70 feet in length, and about as thick as the body of an ordinary elephant. Near the root of this trunk was an immense quantity of black shaggy hair, more than could have been supplied by the coats of a score of buffaloes, and projecting from this hair, downwardly and laterally, sprang two gleaming tusks, not unlike those of the wild boar but of infinitely greater dimensions. Extending forward, parallel with the proboscis, and on each side of it was a gigantic staff, 30 or 40 feet in length, formed seemingly of pure crystal and in shape a perfect prism. It reflected in the most gorgeous manner the rays of the declining sun. The trunk was fashioned like a wedge with the apex to the earth. From it, there were outspread two pairs of wings, each wing nearly 100 yards in length, one pair being placed above the other and all thickly covered with metal scales, each scale apparently some 10 or 12 feet in diameter. I observed that the upper and lower tiers of wings were connected by a strong chain, but the chief peculiarity of this horrible thing was the representation of a death's head which covered nearly the whole surface of its breast, and which was as accurately traced in glaring white 
upon the dark ground of the body, as if it had been there, carefully designed by an artist. While I regarded the terrific animal, and more especially the appearance on its breast, with a feeling of horror and awe, with a sentiment of forthcoming evil, which I found it impossible to quell by any effort of the reason, I perceived the huge jaws at the extremity of the proboscis suddenly expand themselves, and from them there proceeded a sound so loud and so expressive of woe that it struck upon my nerves like a knell, and as the monster disappeared at the foot of the hill, I fell at once, fainting to the floor. Upon recovering, my first impulse, of course, was to inform my friend of what I had seen and heard, and I can scarcely explain what feeling of repugnance it was which, in the end, operated to prevent me. At length, one evening, some three or four days after the occurrence, we were sitting together in the room in which I had seen the apparition, I occupying the same seat at the same window, and he lounging on a sofa near at hand. The association of the place and time impelled me to give him an account of the phenomenon. He heard me to the end, at first laughed heartily, and then lapsed into an excessively grave demeanour, as if my insanity was a thing beyond suspicion. At this instant I again had a distinct view of the monster, to which, with a shout of absolute terror, I now directed his attention. He looked eagerly, but maintained that he saw nothing, although I designated minutely the course of the creature as it made its way down the naked face of the hill. I was now immeasurably alarmed, for I considered the vision either as an omen of my death or, worse, as the forerunner of an attack of mania. I threw myself passionately back in my chair and for some moments buried my face in my hands. When I uncovered my eyes, the apparition was no longer apparent. My host, however, had in some degree resumed the calmness of his demeanour and questioned me very rigorously in respect to the confirmation of the visionary creature. When I had fully satisfied him on this head, he sighed deeply as if relieved of some intolerable burden, and went on to talk, with what I thought a cruel calmness, of various points of speculative philosophy which had heretofore formed subject of discussion between us. I remember his insisting very especially, among other things, upon the idea that the principal source of error in all human investigations lay in the liability of the understanding to underrate or to overvalue the importance of an object, through mere mismeasurement of its propinquity. To estimate properly, for example, he said, the influence to be exercised on mankind at large by the thorough diffusion of democracy, the distance of the epoch at which such diffusion may possibly be accomplished should not fail to form an item in the estimate. Yet, can you tell me one writer on the subject of government who has ever thought this particular branch of the subject worthy of discussion at all? He here paused for a moment, stepped to a bookcase, and brought forth one of the ordinary synopses of natural history, requesting me then to exchange seats with him, that he might the better distinguish the fine print of the volume. He took my armchair at the window, and, opening the book, resumed his discourse very much in the same tone as before. But for your exceeding minuteness, he said, in describing the monster, I might never have had it in my power to demonstrate to you what it was. In the first place, let me read to you a schoolboy account of the genus Sphinx, of the family Crespulcaria, of the order Lepidoptera, of the class Insecta, or insects. The account runs thus. Four membranous wings covered with little coloured scales of metallic appearance, mouth forming a rolled proboscis, produced by an elongation of the jaws, upon the sides of which are found the rudiments of mandibles and downy palpi. The inferior wings retained to the superior by a stiff hair, antenna in the form of an elongated club, prismatic, abdomen pointed. The death's headed sphinx has occasioned much terror among the vulgar at times by the melancholy kind of cry which it utters and the insignia of death which it wears upon its corslet. Here he closed the book and leaned forward in the chair, placing himself accurately in the position which I had occupied at the moment of beholding the monster. Ah, here it is, he presently exclaimed. It is reascending the face of the hill, 
and a very remarkable looking creature I admit it to be. Still, it is by no means so large or so distant as you imagined it. The fact is that, as it wriggles its way up this thread, which some spider has wrought along the window sash, I find it to be about the sixteenth of an inch in its extreme length, and also about the sixteenth of an inch distant from the pupil of my eye. Bloody hell. Crikey. Intenso. Intenso. And we love that, by the way. We do. We, we, uh, we really researched that the other day when we listened to uh, the goth moth's words. Edgar Allan Poe, is it? It is Edgar Allan Poe, the Sphinx. And what we love about that is the fact that it talks about symbolism and the ways in which uh, appearances and perceptions of things can be different from the reality of things. And the story talks about how the guy, the dude, sees some giant creature coming down towards him uh, and tells the other dude about that. And the other dude's like, what? And the other dude's like, yeah. And then basically what happens is that the guy is actually seeing not a massive creature coming down the hill, but actually a tiny little spider on a window in front of him. And it's like... The mind boggles with that yeah, kind of thing. It's boggling and it's deep, basically. Uh, and I'm glad I looked into that because it's very moth orientated and moth stis vibes. Yeah, and we. Oh, yeah. And Mothbox, have you got something to say about that as well? Because I think you might actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think you definitely do. It was deep. It was deep. I was deep in mothballs. I love a bit of Poe, me. Yeah, I mean, gosh. Which bit all... of Poe? Which bit of Poe? Toes. I once saw some bubble gum on the floor that was in the shape of Edgar Allan Poe's face. <laughs> Just thought I'd put that in there. That's like a conspiracy theory. I think so, yeah. <laughs> the car. Oh, well. Five so, yeah. Paradolia, they call it, don't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm a sufferer myself. I suffer too. <laughs> Has yeah, anyone here got any moth phobias, by the way? Anyone? Simon? No. Just a plain no from the gang. <laughs> I've got loads of moth phobias. <laughs> I think that just puts no. a draws a line under that question. Yeah. So let's move on. Yes, let's move on. We've got more videos to come still. Yeah, we obviously do. So the next video is, who is it? You tell me. It's, is it Tommy and Caroline? It is. Moth awesome cycle. Tommy and Caroline. People who have truly taken on board the, uh, the theme, which is the moth cycle itself, which we've tried to allude to throughout the show. With little success. <laughs> <laughs> or a vast success, who knows. Yeah. Thank you, Benya. Yeah. Take yeah. it away.
So that was Venusian, if, if we're on, by the way, at the moment. And, um, Venusian snares. It, 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 was a mood, it was a mood change, which I quite enjoyed, actually, because we've had some very sort of upbeat stuff, and that was a little bit more poignant and thought-provoking, I would say. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a varied experience, I'd say. And, you know, we're obviously discussing, you know, how we can improve on that in, in terms of where it's placed within the, the thread. But, you know, all good. <laughs> yeah, well, it is all good. I mean, the whole thing about this, you know, moth dis and vice moth experience, as usual, is that it's kind of a, 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 a smorgasbord, a ritualistic kind of mixture that that we might not be able to kind of entirely dictate or control. Exactly. That, that's live, isn't it? A cornucopia, it? but not necessarily in that shape. <laughs> <laughs> what is the shape of a cornucopia? It's like a horn that holds items. A horn of plenty. A horn of plenty. It's exactly. never, never empty. Never empty. And Mothbox, what are, what are your thoughts? I mean, we're, we're, quite, we're kind of summarising the show now. We're, gonna, we're on us. our way out. We're on our way out. Well, well, we've gone over a little bit, but, you know, it's all, all well and good. Have we? What's happening, animal? Well, What's happening, animal hern? Tell What's us right now. animal hern? What are people saying? What are people saying? Well, they're saying quality this, PR KGV vibes. Oh. We've Whoa. got rubber glove rocks. Um, wow. Dan says, Emily, you're so good at art and I love you. That's lovely. Aww. Thanks. Aww. <laughs> you are. I'm blushing. <laughs> we wouldn't know. What's up next, guys? I've completely gone blank. Um, so I do believe... Well, do we need to say anything else about this? Um, okay, so, well, we just had a mixture of stuff. The, the, the flow through of the moth life cycle, loosely speaking. Please donate to the charity, which is Migrant Artists Mutual Aid. Oh, the, the Zoom dance party. That's, yes. 
That's that we've also lovely. put a link to donate in the chat. Yes, For please. anyone who can't do it on the website, I'll put it in again now. Good, good stuff. And so this Zoom dance party is, is still an, op an, an option that we actually are going to yeah. go for. Can I just make a point here? So we've had Thing Piece in the... Uh, you know, well, he's, don't go on him right now. He's, he's not dressed. But... Um, <laughs> He's been, you know, keeping the moth action going, keeping the workshop going. And, you know, we're hoping that if anyone has been making a moth at home, I don't know if we have emphasized that enough, that maybe in the Zoom chat you might be dancing with said moth. <laughs> yeah. You know. So it's you, it's the moths, it's techno. With Joe Germain. Joe Germain. There he is over there, everyone. Nice. Thank Woo! you. Young people with fluorescent T-shirts. Obviously, we're all social distancing. That's so why we've got those two over the right they over there. They live together, actually, so that's all right. Yeah, of the same, the bubble. Anyway, so what have we got now? It's we've got a poem. It's a poem and a transition as we sort of consider what it is to be an imago, which is the term for an adult moth. Uh, we perhaps kind of segue into the, the, the vitalization of the moth spirit. That we do. Correct. And with it being, you know, solstice, bothstice, we like to bid you almost farewell. Pre-farewell. Pre-farewell. And uh, get on with it. So play the poem. Moths gathered in a fluttering throng one night to learn the truth about the candlelight. And they decided one of them should go to gather news of the elusive glow. One flew, till in the distance he discerned a palace window where a candle burned and went no nearer. Back again he flew to tell the others what he thought he knew. The mentor of the moths dismissed his claim, remarking, he knows nothing of the flame. A moth more eager than the one before set out and passed beyond the palace door. She hovered in the aura of the fire, a trembling blur of timorous desire, then headed back to say how far she'd been and how much she had undergone and seen. The mentor said, you do not bear the signs of one who's fathom how the candle shines. Another moth flew out. Their dizzy flight turned to an ardent booing of the light. They dipped and soared, and in their frenzy trance, both self and fire were mingled by their dance. The flame engulfed their wingtips, body, head. Their being glowed a fierce, translucent red. And when the mentor saw that sudden blaze, the moth's form lost within the glowing rays, she said, They know, they know, the truth we seek, that hidden truth of which we cannot speak. To come beyond all knowledge is to find that comprehension which eludes the mind. And you can never gain the longed-for goal until you first outsoar both flesh and soul. But should one part remain, a single hair will drag you back and plunge you in despair. No creature's self can be admitted here, where all identity must disappear. Yeah. <laughs> 
But the flame that I crave will kill me, I know. Ba 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 Hot Moths. Cool. Woo! So what? We're going straight into... Straight into the legendary Joe. Get it. Zoom party, go on. Moths, moths, moths.
big it up for the big moth party. Oh. Tiny moth solo. All my lovers in the house, put your hands up. All my people in the house, put your hands up. All the hot in the house, put your hands up. Everybody, put your hands up. They stayed for the party.
Thank mm-hmm. you.